you know, yes, the coin can go up and down in value. That's the only really unknown of the whole ecosystem is you don't know what the coin will be worth, but you always know that you're going to get paid. Like I said before, that's the, the beauty of it is that that contract will make sure that you get paid every day. I, I want to just real quick, and, and maybe we can have you just run through like how it actually works, Ewok, but we are going to get, and I don't want to take this for granted, we are going to get more and more new viewers over the course of this year, exponentially more next year, the year after that, 2024, 2025. I think it's necessary right now with all of this, you know, call it FUD, call it drama, whatever you want to, but everything going on with Pulse Chain. And as you alluded to, a lot of these people that are getting into this market right now, or this sector of DeFi, um, we're really into the new layer one. Like people just absolutely love layer ones. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Pulse Chain, I think is great and is going to continue to be great. Um, but I think we need to restate a little bit about what Hex really is and why, you know, for Pulse Chain to exist and for be for there to be this fever pitch around Pulse Chain, it couldn't have happened without Hex already being there first. That really was... You know, Richard's first creation, making a better Bitcoin, a better store of value. Um, so I want to get your thoughts real quick. And if, if you were, let me do, I'll put it to you this way, because clearly we have a lot of people right now that aren't really that interested in Hex. They just want to buy like the, the new thing that's going to go up the most. And hey, more power to you if that's what you want to do. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I think the Pulse token is probably the best buy of this ecosystem right now. But we also want to even be looking, you know, beyond this. And again, Hex was kind of the engine of this whole thing. So Ewok, could you kind of do your elevator pitch anyway, or at least for some of these people anyway, to remind them like why Hex has this fever pitch around it, what that smart contract is really all about and how what it's actually intent is, is to get people to focus on long-term gratification and not so much so zoomed in to every single day like we're doing right now. Sure. Um, so, you know, Hex started out as a, the, the marketing on it was, it was a, you know, it was a blockchain certificate of deposit. Mm -hmm. The idea was delayed gratification. It was to pay your future self um, and, and delay the gratification by locking up your coins in one of the very few, um, there might be one or two others, but you know, most people were wanting yield, right? When you have Bitcoin, you can't get yield uh, without giving it to a centralized party. So the reason Hex was created was because you want to create yield, but you don't want to trust middlemen, okay? The middlemen suck most of the time. You give money to somebody to loan it out to make a little bit of yield. And 95% of the time, something happens to it, right? Your money's gone. Uh, they either go bankrupt because they over leverage themselves or um, they just mismanage it and pay the new people or pay the old people with the new people until they run out of money. Uh, but either way, most of the time the money's gone. The idea of Hex is to lock up your own money in your own contract, in your own wallet and earn yield trustlessly without middlemen. Um, and, and that is the, the goal. It's the, the delayed gratification um, of the contract. So, so, I mean, I don't know if you want me to get into what it really does um, and the share system, because that's the, the beauty of hexes or the T-shares. Or yeah, hit us, with, or, hit, hit us with the, 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 nice, the nicest, concise one you can. And I think what you could also do too, like you were already saying, is like Hex on Ethereum, which everybody's just, you know, throwing out the window right now, how that, how those T-shares, the share system could benefit you even more right now with the exodus from Hex on Ethereum. Okay. So look at the, the stakes as a, a big pie, okay? Everybody mm -hmm. that makes a stake so the way the contract works is you put hex in to the, the contract, you determine how many days you want to lock it up. Um, it then burns those tokens. So they're gone from the supply. Um, and then you're issued what we call shares. So, you know, as time goes on, the shares get more expensive. Those The share rate can only go up. So over time, it's harder and harder to obtain these things. Um, 
hang on one second here. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, You're good. So as time goes on, the shares share rate goes up. It can only go up. Every time somebody ends a stake, it looks to see if you've made more profit than before. If so, then the share rate increases slowly. The reason that is, and the what that does, is it stops the little person, not the little person, but the short stakers from compounding. So rather than do a whole bunch of 30-day stake, 30-day stake, 30-day stake, each time they do a 30-day stake, the share rate is going to be higher and they're going to get less shares. Now, the shares are how you get paid. So say you get two or say you get 10 T-shares, for example. Um, at the end of every day, 8, 8 p.m. Uh, our time, but zero mm -hmm. UTC, um, the, sh the, the payout for that day is calculated. So it's based on how much of the pie you own along with all the penalties. Now, if you don't do what you say you're going to do, there's penalties. Like it, 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 it penalizes you for not honoring what you said you were going to do. Um, early end stakes, things like that. If you don't end your stake whenever it's done, uh, you have two weeks and they start to bleed out by 1% a week. So essentially you have two years to get it out, but 1% a week will, will bleed it slowly. Um, so all those two penalties to get it out. You said you two have, years. You have two years, but then, or you have two weeks to, to get it out before penalties start, but you have two years before your I stake is completely gone. My bad. Um, My bad. It's basically a hundred weeks, which is yeah. you know, you know, just just under two years. But either way, um, it will bleed your entire stake, including your principal too, not just your not just the yield that you earn. So, um, but anyway, it's calculated daily, and then the payout is calculated on a per share basis. So every day you're earning more. That's why some of these fees are so high because it does take a lot of gas to do those. It, it will go back in to calculate how many hex you earned every single day. Um, and then it pays you at the end of it. So it is a delayed inflation model. Um, but the fewer people that are in the system, the higher the rate is because obviously that's more of the piece of pie that you own. Okay. Right. Now, the overall shares will pretty much always go down because of the share rate system. So it's going to be harder and harder to obtain those. And that's why a lot of people have locked them up for the maximum of 15 years so that they could get the max return on their investment um, and lock them up for the longest period of time. If you only lock it up for one year, then at the end of that year, the shares are gone. Your hex is minted. And then you have to start over again. So you have to buy back in um, at a at a at a higher share rate, um, and it takes more hex to get the same amount of T shares that you had before. So, right, you know, I, it, it is the store of value. It's the store of value. It's the reason Pulse Chain exists uh, in the first place because you know the fees got crazy. Now, hopefully, the horizontal scaling that is Pulse Chain will help with Ethereum. And I think a lot of people may come over to our side um, and run some of these higher gas intensive contracts, things like that, because it is more affordable for, for their, their community. Um, and hopefully by doing that, it will lower the Ethereum fees for, for you know, the hex on that side too. So yeah, you know, that, that's my spiel on what Hex is. And I, like like I said, it, it's difficult to understand. There's a lot packed into that. Uh, there's a lot of game theory. Um, there's a lot of uh, mechanics that go into uh, how how great it really is. Uh, but the, the rates that you get for your yield are, are incredible. Like, you know, yes, the coin can go up and down in value. That's the only really unknown of the whole ecosystem is you don't know what the coin will be worth uh but you always know that you're going to get paid like i said before that's the the beauty of it is that that contract will make sure that you get paid every day um that you have a stake so you know. and that's the thing thank you for that ewok and i think that's the thing that um many people will get back to as the 
not saying that it's, you know, I know this thing just launched, so I'm not saying it's going to happen anytime soon, but as the shine of Pulse Chain, you know, dulls a little bit in a couple of years, I think people might be reminded of why Hex was the first love, so to speak. You know, I mean, that's why people wanted this because, you know, there isn't a lot of stability in crypto and you have to make sure that you are aggressively buying the lows and selling when nobody else wants to at the top of the market. And that is extremely right. hard to do. And, you know, for, for, for most people, I mean, like for, for a lot of people, something like Hex really is kind of a savior. A lot of people were day traders before that, or even swing traders or something of the sort. And being able to earn that kind of yield, you know, you don't get those percentages of yield in too many spots in crypto, um, especially with this kind of uptime that we've seen with the Hex contract for over three years now. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be um, something that people are reminded of as we we get further into this. But um, and I do let, agree with your statement where you know Pulse Chain right now is the the new shiny thing, and, and mm -hmm. you know we'll probably have some some pretty good gains for people that get in. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the people that get into Hex now aren't going to see the gains that we got from three years ago. Um, so I think they're pivoting a little bit, but I think they're still underestimating the possibility of of what could happen when the financial space actually sees what's happening with the non-custodial yield um and it becomes quite attractive to some some pretty big players that that may want to generate yield um you know that do have a little bit of risk tolerance so yeah you know, we could see some pretty nice gains and and who's to say that we couldn't you know get another thousand x out of hex this cycle and maybe that's all that Pulse Chain does too. So I mean, it could be very, very close. Now down the road, I think you know if you're buying in now, obviously for a long term horizon, um, which there aren't seem there don't seem to be too many of those uh, because everybody wants to make that five X and go. It, it just seems, yeah, you know, it, it's funny. So I, I I do think over time, people that come into the space will notice what Hex is um the you know the hexagons aren't going anywhere um and i think they'll they'll realize that hey this may be the actual ticket here you know because you can set it forget it come back when your stake is done and rinse and repeat so it's you know it's pretty nice especially when you have them and you're able to set up a laddered staking um succession like that it makes it pretty nice where, like I said, check in once a month, once a quarter, um, every six months, however you want to set it. You know, if you want a nice little paycheck every six months, set it out. You could do that for the next 15 years and then just keep setting one. Every six months, you put another one out for 15 um, and it's a it's a never ending cycle of of just passive income. Yeah, and I think we can also restate that at, at some point too, maybe on a um, another episode later this year, but like how you know, staking ladders work and stuff. I think there is going to be a need for like people to kind of come back to understanding the different ways. And like you said, the mechanics of how to use hex, because it's, it's not going to be the thing that people are focused on right now. I mean, clearly they're not even living out the terms of their stakes, their emergency <laughs> and staking to buy other yeah. stuff that's then dipping even lower. So um, yeah, definitely a lot to talk about for that, but uh good, good summation there for sure. 